Okay, welcome everybody. Today we're going to be discussing the fundamentals of Google AdWords for realtors. The previous workshops we covered Google reviews, hopefully the fundamentals. Everybody's done a great job trying to, you know, follow the steps. If you have any friends, colleagues out there, just reach out to them and just ask them for a review just to speak to your character. But just get those reviews out because Google's algorithm will look at your reviews. So you really want to make sure that uh, you get that going quickly. Uh, okay, so today's agenda is... Uh, it's going to be a little more technical than Tuesdays, but we're going to see why using Google ads in real estate is important. Just really quick, I'm going to show you the difference between Google versus Facebook ads. Why farming for real estate agents is great because Google's got a great feature called geotargeting. So you can get very specific to any specific area that you want, even based on interests of people. We're going to cover what are custom vanity domains, the importance of landing pages and sales funnels, and how they fit in into advertising researching the cost of keywords. So I'm going to show you exactly how you can figure out how much something would cost for a specific phrase or a word and how much other people are paying for it. We're going to recreate an ad that I'm just going to find on Google within the interface of Google ads. So, and then we're going to create an actual Google ad campaign and go through all the settings and different things that you could do. We're also going to narrow in on specific keyword ideas and how Google's system makes it super easy for everybody to figure out ideas for keyword groups and things of that nature. And I'm going to show you how to spy on competition, how a certain website, what keywords they would be doing and how much they're paying for advertising. Why realtors using Google AdWords may fail. So the fact is that most people fail at Google AdWords. It's not just realtors. If you don't understand the platform specific goals or advertise too broadly, or don't set a realistic budget, you're just going to set yourself up for a fail. You do need to understand that advertising is expensive and it's costly, but it is an investment. And it's an investment that will pay off just like print advertising used to be for. It may happen in a day, but it may not. It may take a week, two weeks, three weeks, but consistency does pay off. Uh, Google versus Facebook. Google ads are not the same as Facebook. On Facebook, you advertise primarily based on interests and demographic information from Facebook users and businesses. Uh, on Google, you can target based on intent and specifics of what people are searching. You're more gearing to get quality leads. Uh, Facebook is more of a, a social platform where people say what they would like, but it's not necessarily allowing you to search for what they're thinking. And that is the intent portion of Google searching. They serve to people based on their keyword searches. So again, they're all about user intent, whereas Facebook ads, they're served to people based on their characteristics and general preferences. Okay, geotargeting for real estate ads. So many realtors specialize in specific neighborhoods. If that's true for you, you probably want to take advantage of the geotargeting offered by Google Ads. So in fact, Google targeting is so easy that you can actually farm for brand new prospects across any areas of interest or any neighborhoods. You can target people who are searching for a two bedroom condo by a cafe in Liberty Village. That's how specific you can target your keywords. And if somebody actually types that phrase in, the odds are that you will definitely rank on the first page simply because the competition is going to be very, very low. And we're going to get into competition metrics uh, in a little bit. This also ensures that you're going to get the most qualified leads without wasting a lot of money, basically. So vanity domain names, why are they important? So vanity domains are used in digital advertising campaigns to create an easier, more memorable way to drive traffic to a landing page or a sales funnel. So typically you register a vanity domain like sellwithjohn.com or johnsellshousesfast.com. And then you redirect these to longer destination paths. So these could be landing pages that you purchase with other third-party vendors, IDX search results. Uh, as an example, if you wanted to have an ad that says $500,000 condos in Oakville, that would be your keyword phrase. You could register a domain vanity called 500,000condos.com. So that would be your vanity domain and you would redirect that to the long path of the IDX search within your website or anywhere else. Right here at the very top on the ad that I screenshot, you can see the www.experiencebrightwater.ca. So that would be an example of a vanity URL. Below that, you have one that is not a vanity domain name. It's just mls.properties hyphen search.ca. So it's not really memorable, right? That's what I'm getting at. It just creates nice, memorable domain name that somebody's going to remember. 
So the simplicity of the vanity domain evokes professionalism and looks better on Google ads. Your prospects and leads will more likely remember it if they liked your content, but maybe they'll lose your destination URL for whatever, for whatever reason. .ca and .com domains can be purchased as low as 15 bucks via godaddy.com. So I strongly recommend for everybody to purchase multiple domain names with research keywords that still convey your brand and you can just reuse them and then repoint them to any new projects. This is quite easy to do in pre-construction projects, for example. If you find a nice phrase that people are constantly looking at using something called the keyword planner, it's provided by Google, it's a free uh, software, then you can create a domain name around that specific keyword phrase. It's going to cost you 15 bucks, but then you know that if somebody types that in, the odds of your ad showing up the very top are immediate because not only will you be targeting the exact phrase, but you're also going to have the authority of a domain name. And therefore, the person, the prospect is hopefully going to recognize that you're a professional, and you know exactly what you're doing, and then they'll contact you. So a landing page is a standalone web page created specifically for a marketing or advertising campaign that is meant to capture leads or increase conversion. It's where a visitor lands after they click on the link in an email or an ad from Google, Bing, YouTube, Facebook, to Instagram, Twitter, or anywhere else from the web. It's designed with a single focus or goal in mind, and that is for a call to action. This action may be to buy a product, provide an email address, or book an event, or even uh, schedule a showing for a real estate property if it's a pre-construction event, for example. And again, you can see at the very top, it's called a funnel because it's a funnel. At the very top, you've got all these blog posts, YouTube videos, social media posts, and you're all feeding them into this one little tube, and that's your campaign, right? So where can you get landing pages? So Wix.com, uh, they have a lot of upgraded features, obviously, if you don't want to see ads all over your uh, website. Uh, but that's an example. MailerLite.com is another one. Unbounce.com. There's also ClickFunnels.com. But I'm going to show you two examples of uh, pre-construction landing pages that I've created. Uh, and I'm going to show you the stuff that I use, the software that I use. So here's an example because we're going to be using this in our, in our test. So this is a quick landing page. Right, it just shows the features of whatever property, you know. So the ideal situation would be because you guys are super busy and you don't be paying, you know, hundred bucks an hour to a designer, is to you know have a system in place where you can just basically come in here and you can just change this to something else, and then upload different pictures in real time. Uh, I'm just grab this. Uh, where is this? Is this it? Yeah. So this is this is how you edit this page, right? So this is a live page on the internet. And this is how you edit this page using the software. So how is this different from a website that we already have with exact Well, a website or... usually contains information about other things. So your website is a brand, right? You're talking about yourself. Uh, it's going to have examples of like listings, for example. It's going to say why you're a great agent, how you can arrange financing, and so on and so forth, right? There's a lot of information. You don't, that's not a funnel. That's an exploratory website. You just hoping that the person is going to love you and your brand and what you stand for, right? That's what that is. That's what a website is. A sales funnel, on the other hand, is specific to the project or service that you're promoting. In this instance, it would be Nouveau Condominiums or any other condominium project, right? That you as a realtor would have access to selling or you had maybe five units to sell. You would set up a landing page, which would be your funnel, and then you would create ads around your landing page. How, how do you create this landing page? Uh, again, so going back to uh, Wix.com, MailerLite.com, and Unbounce.com. So it really just depends on what themes and templates you like and what works for you. But once you set on one, you can just keep reusing that over and over. You can just keep editing it so you don't waste a lot of time and upload pictures. So that's why I'm showing you this one. This is something that I built uh, for myself. Ideally, when you're finding and you're going through these websites, you want to have something as simple as this. Right. So if I wanted to change this website to change this and this to something else, I just go in here and I'll put Sabia condos, whatever. And then that's it. And then it's done. So then now my landing pages is done. So now I've refreshed this and then that's it. I'm done. Like that's how easy it should be because you don't want to be wasting a lot of time playing and doing anything like that. And you have to register a, a, a name for it? No, this is the landing page that's being spit out from this website, globalestatecorp.com. So this is a long destination URL. 
So if you did not have a vanity URL, right, then this is the link that you would assign when you're creating an ad. If you wanted to register a domain for this specific project, you would go to godaddy.com. So GoDaddy allows you to search for domain names that are available. So if I typed in nouveaucondos.com, I'm sure it's taken, but if, right, it's taken. But if it was not taken, I could buy this and then I could redirect this long link to here. So when somebody types in Nuno Condos, it would essentially take you to this page right here, right? That's what a vanity URL does. That's the bit about the landing pages. So you don't have to, but it just makes it look easier when you have a vanity URL and a nice landing page. Uh, okay, so researching the cost of keywords. So if we type in two bedroom townhouse Liberty Village, at least from my location, uh, I have a page with results on Google. The first two to four, depending on how many people are bidding on that particular phrase, is going to display ads. It's marked by saying ad. Um, so these people are, are purchasing advertising based on one of the keywords or phrases within this search result. So Sunil Sani, Sani is obviously buying, paying for a click based on two bedroom townhouse Liberty Village. It could be, he could be buying townhouse. He could be buying townhouse village. He could be buying two bedroom Liberty. We don't know that, but we know that he is buying something from here. That's why he's number one on the very top. Uh, Liberty Village also is buying ads, but clearly he's outbidding them, which means he's paying more money than the Liberty Village. And you get to determine how much you're willing to spend uh, when you're posting your ads, right? You can set budgets, you can set maximums of how much you're willing to pay. Because if some company, if, if the Nouveau condominiums, and I'm gonna keep referring to that, if, if their builder is also, I don't know if that's even allowed, if they also have their own real estate agents, they would probably wanna make sure that they cash in so they don't pay uh, commissions to you guys. So they would invest more money in an advertising campaign to trump you when people are searching for it, if that makes sense. So if you wanted to compete with them, you would need to make sure that your budget is competing with their budget. And you're not gonna know what their budget is, So, but you're gonna see how much the keyword or the phrase is worth. So if it's worth five bucks, that basically means for $5, you're gonna get a click. That's what that means. Whether it's your, your so if I would to click on this, whatever the keywords within here cost, that's how much that person would pay immediately. And again, if you click it 15 times, then you just wasted $15 if each phrase was a dollar. So you can stifle your competition that way too, if you'd like, just eat up their uh, budget. I know that people do that for a fact. Uh, on this side, it's just a quick screenshot. I will, we will hopefully get into this of what the uh, search interface looks like. So here I typed in Liberty Village, Townhouse Liberty Village, Liberty Village condos, rent in Liberty Village. So I type these phrases and this is what Google spit out saying that the, this is the cost of all these phrases within my local area where I'm gonna be uh, purchasing the ads for. So you, the first one is keywords and the second one is average monthly searches. So here it shows you for new condos in Liberty Village, there's only 10 to 100 searches every single month. Okay, so the competition is very low. Uh, top of uh, page bid, low range, a dollar four, high range, three seventy two. So they're basically saying, within one hundred searches, if you are to prepare more than three dollars and seventy two cents, you will be at the very top. That's what that means. If you want to pay a dollar four, if there's only two or three people advertising on that given day within that geo area then you may be number two or number four. That's what that means. Let's move on. Okay, so this is a little closer uh, snapshot here. Again, this is exactly what I was saying earlier. On this side, I typed in homes for sale Oakville. And again, I just wanted to illustrate that this person is obviously investing a lot of money. And I did check him out. He seems to be, uh, he doesn't have a lot of Google reviews. so. He's obviously betting uh, that Google Ads is paying off for him because he's got a really nice homepage, but the rest of his website, in my opinion, is not that great. So that means that he is clearly getting results from advertising. 
Uh, and so he's saying he's the award-winning realtor, get top dollar for your home. And then on this ad, you can see award-winning realtor over 15 years of experience. So I was curious to see how much it costs to be an award-winning realtor on Google. So I went in and I typed in award-winning realtor. And then it said that the competition is medium, but it's still less than the previous um, Liberty Village. So it says, if you pay $1.63, you're going to be the best award-winning realtor on Google. So just saying. That's $1.63 over how long? Per day? Uh, yeah. No, that's all it is. So you have you set a budget. So if you set a budget for a hundred, you're gonna and it's over one dollar sixty three cents per. That means that you're gonna end up at the very top because I, you outbid every single person for that specific phrase. But if somebody clicks on that, then you you basically have a one hundred divided by one point six three. So maybe you get I don't know fifty two clicks for your entire budget. Marcin, now we have two quick questions. I think they're relevant. So one was from Annette saying, uh, can she link IDX to Wix? Can she link IDX? No, so no, no. Wix is kind of like what your IDX would do, but except it doesn't have IDX. Yeah, Wix it's just a landing page, right? It's not a website. No, but wait, no, but I think there's a better solution for what you're asking. You take your IDX feed and you link that to an ad. Or you can take your IDX lead and you can link it to like this, this text link right here. This is an extension call right here. This is a call. You can it's a testimonial. So you can say, you know, five hundred thousand dollar listings in Oakville, six hundred thousand dollars listing in Oakville. So you can add these and then link them to your IDX search result feeds. So you don't even need Wix for that. You can use your existing website, which has IDX on it already. Which has IDX on it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Khaled's asking, uh, how do you get to this search page? Which search page? The, the one with the costings on it. Uh, you mean like that's Google ads. We're going to get there. This oh. is just going doing an overview. So if I'm going through it, you guys have a basic fundamental understanding of what we're doing here. Right. Okay. So let's move on. Uh, so we're going to try to recreate this ad uh, first in text form and then in real time. Uh, so Nuvo, this is an actual ad, except I put in a fake, um, um, URL here from the one that I created. Uh, so, okay, so Nuvo 2 Condo Platinum VIP, register for Nuvo 2 Condos, VIP pricing. Now, when it comes to writing the copy, uh, Google does have little help tips, but it's really based on search keywords. So sometimes you will not be grammatically correct, but you will be hitting those keywords. So you want to have a nice mix between something that makes sense but it's something that's got every single keyword that you want people to, uh, to hit on. Uh, your actual description, again, should include at least once the same keywords that you're adding into your title or your heading. So the, the blue stuff is your heading title, the gray stuff is your description, and then these are your callouts. And these are called, what are these called? I think extensions. This is just this is based on whatever Google uh, gathers, though. So they recommend to you what people are searching for. And I don't I don't know if you guys know how to get that, but you can, anybody can get that. Let me just type that in. Um, Nouveau condos. So if you type in Nouveau condos by default, you don't actually see them, right? So if you want to see them, you click on the link. OK, and then you press back on your browser and then it's going to reveal it. Otherwise you will not see it. So that's a little tip for you. It, it works on every link. Mostly. You see that? Different. So that's a little, so I mean, it does take a lot of time to go and do your research if you're really trying to compete with other agents. But once you figure this whole system out, you know, you're gonna be a, a force to reckon with. Okay, uh, moving on. Okay, so now, we're gonna go through this in real time, but this is what the text screens look like. Okay, when, when we first start creating an ad, there's two, two modes. There's the smart mode and there's the ex expert mode. Expert mode is a lot more technical. There's a lot more features offered, but it can get a little overwhelming. So we're gonna go with the smart mode here. So the first step is gonna, they're gonna ask you, do you wanna do more, do you wanna get more calls or do you want to drive people to, uh, to your website or do you wanna sell a product? How did you get to this page? I will get there. I'm just 
you have to here you have to log in to google.com slash adsense like this is the this is the actual thing okay yeah like right here so this is what you're going to be presented with get more calls get more websites or signups get more visits to a physical location for everybody right now i would say get, get more calls is obviously what you want if you have a sales funnel like a really good landing page then probably get more website right but I would say probably everybody wants to get more calls. So then the next step, they're gonna say, they're gonna present you with a little wizard that says enter your headline, enter your headline, enter your headline. So you have three spots for your headlines. And then description one, description two, and then show a call button in your ad. So this is where you put your phone number. And then if you want, you can put a location of your, uh, of your address, but most people shouldn't do that because you guys are all part of the brokerage and you don't wanna advertise your home office. Uh, and then there, there's a preview on the side that shows you what it's going to look like as an ad. Okay. So this is what it's looked like. And this is kind of what it's going to appear. Now in the smart mode, you do not get the option of adding extension links or call out links, which are these extra things in here, right? If you want to invest the time to learn about them, then you will have the option to do that, right? It just, you just got to read some Google um, help uh, bubbles that appear. And then your website here, this is the link that is going to take people when they click on the blue link. So this is my landing page or my regular IDX for, for Victoria, right? Okay, so in the advanced mode, as I was referring to, you have site links and you have callouts. So uh, yeah, so callouts are these extra little things that would fall behind the description. So, but then they would shorten your description. So Google is not going to give you two lines of description and callouts. If you want callouts, then these can be linked to links, separate links, but then you're going to have to sacrifice your description, right? Uh, your uh, site links are, yeah, so it shows you free site links and AdWords. So uh, I think I can show an example of this. So, so over time on your website, you're going to see these things here, like our realtors, right? So these are called site links. You can get the same things when you're paying for it right here underneath as under the ad itself. So this would come in very, very handy if you had, if you wanted to, again, target very specific uh, projects, maybe, maybe you're representing five condo projects. Uh, maybe you want to you know, make it simple for people to click on when they're browsing for, you know, a certain price condos in a certain area, then you would just create a nice, easy to uh, click on link and then link it to that search result within your IDX of your website. Next are keyword themes. So you can add keyword themes to match your ads to the searches. So keyword themes are words or phrases that help match your ads with Google searches. Selecting the right keyword themes can help you reach people when they're looking for products and services you offer. Uh, how does it work? So a single keyword theme represents multiple similar words and phrases. For instance, a keyword theme bakery makes your ad eligible to show when people search for bakery near me, local bakery, and cake shop. So Google knows what people are searching for. So they're pulling your phrases within their idea slots and their groups. Uh, so geotargeting your ads. So this is another option that you're going to have in your, uh, more so in the advanced mode, but on your smart mode, you can select a uh, postal code, for example. So this is great for farming. Uh, for in this example, uh, I did a search and I wanted to see if I can narrow it down right by Walmart super center, because that's where they're building like three projects right now. And I could, so you just type in Walmart super center Oakville, it finds it for you. And then down at the bottom, there's the 5K. You can drag this little ball on your scrubber and you can adjust how much of a radius, right? You want to target. So what this means is that any person who's Googling on their phone or living in that area and searching for the specific phrase that you would have added to your keyword themes is gonna get hit with your ad. So anybody past this circle is not gonna, is not gonna matter because they're never going to see your ad anyway. Got it? Yes? Clear? 
hopefully. Yeah, uh, okay. so, uh, so this is important. So if you're farming in a certain area, then this is really important to do. But if you're actually advertising a, a pre-construction, then you don't want to do that because it's the pre- Well, I mean, that all depends on how you feel. The, the, the more niche you are, the, the higher chance that you're going to be on the very top and the cheaper your the, the keyword is going to be. So I agree with you, but I also caution everybody to just be very vague because if you put condos in Toronto, you know, or, or even new projects. So if you have Mirage condos or if you have, you, still wanna, you probably still want to get a little niche unless you're prepared to spend four or five bucks a keyword or per click. Right. And, you know, you know, if you don't get a lot of leads, you know, and you spend a thousand bucks, you know, you're going to get pretty sour pretty quick and you're not going to want to do it. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on what you're comfortable with and what budget you have. Uh, you know, I'm just going to throw it out there. If you're going to advertise less than a thousand dollars a month, you're going to have a hard time probably uh, appearing in ads. Yeah, that's just how it is. So, you know, think of this as an investment, uh, allocate maybe three months worth and you're going to have to play with different headings and different ads. The great thing is you're going to have an entire suite of tools offered by Google that provides you exactly if people are seeing it, if people are clicking it, where people are clicking from, what areas specifically within your radius. So you can expand and broaden your searches in real time. So if you know that, you know, two days in, you're not getting any results, then yeah, edit your ad, expand your search to 10 K and then maybe you're going to get more leads. So it is, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of experimenting here that happens until you get it right. Okay, so then you set a budget. By default, it gives you an average of how much it would cost you, right? So uh, get an estimated 310 to 503 ad clicks each month if you spend $10 a day. So that, that's about 304 uh, monthly max. And again, this was based on the keywords that I've written in here. So these are the keywords and the phrases that Google is saying, I'm going to get an estimated this number of leads if I pay this much money. Okay. Uh, you can also enter your own budget. And then again, they have a little scrubber. And then again, it does the same thing. It just kind of pre-estimates how much you're going to get versus how much your spending budget is going to be. So you own, the great thing is though, you only pay for actual clicks. Okay. That's it. If nobody clicks, you don't pay. Okay. All right. Uh, payments and dashboard. This is basically what it looks like. Not much to it because there is not much in here. Uh, you do have to put your credit card on there. Uh, usually first time members get a $100 free credit. If you, uh, if you spend $60, so you put your credit card on there, as long as you commit to spending $60 immediately, Google is going to give you a rebate of hundred dollars into your account. That's by default. Uh, okay, so the keyword planner tool is found in our advanced uh, option. So we're, we're gonna go through both options here. Uh, but just so you know, if you S exit from the smart option, which is the easy option, you cannot get back to the easy option. You're just gonna have to get a little more technical after you click that button. Okay. And I think now is, okay, I'm gonna show you this. I'm just gonna show this in real time though but this is essentially what it looks like when you're in this keyword tool. Okay, and in that same tool, you can spy on competitors. So you can uh, select, start with a website, you can paste your competitor's website or any other website, and then they're gonna try and pull keywords and phrases from that entire website as a recommendation. And it's gonna show you uh, how much they're worth. And the great thing is also, based on those ideas, you can say which ones you don't want. So when I typed in, uh, I think I typed in something in Toronto condos. For some reason, I got buy condo in New York as well. So what you can do is you can select that and then you can mark it negative, right? You can refine your keywords to be exact, broad, or phrase. Okay. Uh, and you can do forecast trends as well. So you can just paste in keywords and it's going to tell you how Google believes it's going to rank in the next month based on previous historical data. Uh, these are some helpful keyword analysis websites because it really does come to research. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to be throwing money in the wind. Do not create average ads just because you believe somebody is Googling something. Do not do that. Go on Google, 
type in, spend you know an hour, two hours figuring out what people are searching for with these keyword tools provided to you that I will show you in a minute. And even these things, there's a free uh, right here. This widget, keywords everywhere, it's free. Anytime you type anything into Google, it will spit out results automatically for you for free. So if I put condos, cold fill, as long as you have this widget installed, it's going to show you on the side what people are actually Googling in real time. These results are pulled from, from Google itself. So right away, I already know what people are looking for. Here, even here, a lot of people are searching for condos for sale on Kijiji, which means they're trying to skip the realtors. They're trying to find FISPOs, right? So you could target your ad campaign specifically to these people. You could be, you could have a campaign that says, here's why you shouldn't buy real estate Oakville condos on Kijiji. And then immediately you're hitting three keywords, right? That people are ranking for right now as number one. That's just an idea. Okay. So now I believe we're going to get started. Yeah, this is just advanced stuff. All right. So now that's the presentation. Now we're actually going to get, uh, get going on this. All right. Okay. So first let's go and when you're in your business account, scroll down on the side here is going to say create an ad so this is what we're clicking create an ad okay now be, i've already uh because i already have the expert account i'm gonna i'm gonna switch an account here and i'm going from another email that has a basic account so you guys can see uh i don't know let me try this one nope that's not gonna work uh, give me a moment Try it. Smart campaigns. I said, I would ask you a quick question while you're looking for it. Yeah. Um, and it was asking um, the Google vanity domains. Do you get those through the Google, uh, the Google Ad Center or do you buy those? No, you have to go to uh, godaddy.com or uh, any domain registrar. Go, G-O-D-A-D-D-Y.com. So Google Ads is, is a free, it's free, uh, but it will ask you to enter a credit card. You're going to have very limited options without it. Okay. So just a So this is my keyword planner tool. Okay, I'm gonna show you the keyword planner tool since we're in here for now, because most of this is gonna be done through here. Okay, so right here at the very top, we've got keyword planner tool. Okay, if you do not see this, you're gonna see, you're gonna see only four links and one of them is gonna be switched to expert. So you click switch to expert and then you can have all these if you don't see it. Okay, so now discover new keywords or get search volume. So let's go discover new keywords. So give me a give me a phrase that you would consider um, that you want people to look for as a realtor right now. Anybody? I'll say. Um, Do you have a project right now? That, what? Homes in Hamilton or in Hamilton. Uh, a for, for, uh, first time home buyer. Home possibilities or something like that your okay, first time home buyer Hamilton mm -hmm. even adding the word in could make a difference okay enter now we could add another one so we'll put uh, Hamilton homes for sale and we'll just go with these two and then click get results so now these are what we entered and this is what the Google suggesting these ideas. So we can see that absolutely nobody 
is putting first time home buyer in Hamilton. So if you got this as a keyword, you'd pay very little money and you'd be on top. Hamilton for sale, you've got also, it's pretty low. It's a dollar, it's 40 cents to a dollar, right? So then we can check this and then we can add it to a new ad group. So then when we're creating an ad, we would just say, we want to use this group because you would have already done your market research on the keywords. So you wouldn't have to go and do this again as you're creating the actual ad, okay? So we can keep scrolling down and we can look for what else that they have. We could actually sort. So why don't we click on this top of the page bid and then that will sort it and display the most expensive at the very top, ranking to the lowest at the bottom. So if we wanted to, let's see what people are actually clicking is right here, pre-construction condos in Hamilton. That's a very highly researched keyword and it's the most expensive. So if we Google that right now, let's see who's paying. Nouveau condos, there you go. They're paying for this. And then we just cost them $3. There you go, right? Is this in Hamilton even? So this is in Oakville. Anyway. Uh, and then if you could see that people are searching also for new condos near McMaster, pre-construction homes, Tivoli condos, condos for sale Hamilton. So again, you, it really comes down to research, right? Because there's no magic here. You're not really throwing darts. It's just really just spend some time in here, figure out what you believe people are looking for, and then you spend the money on those keywords. Um, let's see here, point to homes. Let's go on the lowest side. So Hamilton houses for sale MLS. As you can see, the intent here is very broad. It's very general. So I believe that if you got a lead from a person who typed this in, it'd be pretty flaky, right? Because they don't really know what they want yet. But if somebody says, I want a freehold townhouse in Waterdown, that's super specific, right? The close is going to be much easier as long as they trust that you understand maybe the surrounding area of Waterdown. Are we following? Yeah. So let's see what else can we do? Yeah. Okay. So again, I'll let just show you how to refine it. So if I don't want to, if I don't actually want Ancaster for whatever reason, like Zolo Ancaster, right? Because that's it a website. I'm going to click here more and I'm going to add it as a negative keyword. So now the difference between these three is it's a negative keyword. So, so if you're, because you're doing your market research right now. So Google's suggesting to you what other things you could possibly maybe want to consider bidding on. But if they put Zolo and Caster and Zolo is that website, you definitely don't want to be ranked when people are tapping Zolo because Zolo is a massive website. So then you don't want to go and waste a potential click. So you would go and remove that as a, as a keyword, meaning that it would never suggest it to you as you were researching your keyword, you wouldn't accidentally add it in or any of that. That's what a negative keyword is. And so anytime there would be a suggested word for Zolo or Ancaster, it wouldn't come up. That's what I'm in the, in the suggestions by Google. That's what that means. So a broad match means that, again, if it's Zolo or Ancaster or Combination or Hamilton Ancaster, that's a broad match. A phrase match is exactly Zolo Ancaster. Um, sorry, a phrase match would be, uh, no, exact match is Zolo Ancaster. A phrase match would be Zolo Ancaster in a sentence. So I am looking for Zolo Ancaster. That phrase would include your phrase match. So you would still show up in the results of that phrase if you were bidding on that keyword. Okay, so let's just add a couple of things here. I'm gonna call this one Hamilton. I don't know why, but we'll just do it. Hamilton keywords. There you go. So now I have it in here for later if I in case I want to use it. Uh, there's just so there's quite a lot of different things and settings. I mean I'm not gonna get into all of it. You really got to spend some time in here to really narrow down what you want to do. Uh, let's go create a, I'll show you the, the website thing one more time. Uh, get discovering new keywords, start with a website. 
So let's take a website and paste it in here. Let's put your website. Let's put Sutton Summit. Use the entire website or a specific page. Since we're not, this is a landing page, we're going to use the entire thing. Okay, so this is what, based on your brokerage, Google is suggesting that you should target, right? So if somebody wanted to uh, target Sutton's Mississauga, then you, it's $3.44. Right. And this in account basically means that it's part of this keyword is part of your website. Whereas this one is not, it's not an actual keyword phrase found on your website, but it's a recommendation. Best realtors in Mississauga will cost you $9 and 84 cents. All right, let's go create an actual campaign now. I think people are maybe falling asleep. Okay, so uh, new campaign. Okay, so you're gonna be presented with a bunch of options. Again, this is the advanced view. If you were in the smart view, you would only have those three other options, website, call phone. So this is just a little more in depth. So I recommend that you pick between these two, either sales or leads. Leads, if you have a landing page specific to a project uh, or, Perhaps you want to use uh, your IDX search results as a landing page. That is also probably a good thing to use leads on. Sales, again, if you're just trying to farm areas, if uh, you're trying to get new business, if you're trying to build brand awareness about yourself as an agent, you probably want sales. Uh, so we're going to go with, let's go with sales. Okay. Continue. Come on. All right. Next is select a campaign type. Uh, most of this you will not really use, uh, except, okay, so display and search. Display ads are the ones that follow you from site to site. So if you see something, if you see, saw some, if you type something in and that person has an ad running with Google, if you go to a completely different website, that ad is going to follow you. It's going to keep displaying those pictures, those ads for you. That's what a display ad is. Okay. A search is primarily within search engine. So when people are searching for things on Google, that's what a search is. So I would say and recommend that you stick with search. Display ads, are, I don't really, I mean, I've never gotten any good results with them. And I, I would still highly recommend search because people get actually annoyed by those ads. And you can turn those display ads off as well if you get really annoyed or the ad is not attractive or it's too, or interferes in some way with whatever the person is searching for. So I would say, let's go with search. So we click search. Next step is select the ways you like to reach your goal. So website visit, phone call, store visit, app download. So we'll go, we can select two. Uh, so we can do both. So if you still put uh, Sutton, some, oh, actually we'll put Sabia. Sabia. If your website, there's an issue with it, Google will find it and will give you an error. Next. Okay. Campaign name. So this is what you want to call your campaign. So we'll put Sabia Best Agent Campaign. Okay. So do you want to appear in this? No, we don't want to go in the display network. We just want to be in a search. Location. Okay. All countries and territories. No. Canada. Maybe. Enter another location. So we can put, uh, what do you want to farm? Sabia, where do you want to farm? Sorry, I was on Hoochie. <laughs> Mississauga. Okay. Okay, any specific or just Mississauga? Because there's 1.67 million reach, potential reach of people. Mississauga. That's going to be very vague. But we can leave it. Uh, but I'm going to show you advanced option here. If you click advanced, you can just narrow down super close. So we can go, let's put uh, square one. Mm. Um, is it gonna pull it? No, we need the address of square one. Hmm. Uh, give me a landmark in Mississauga. Well, uh, let's do. Like a gym or something. Let's do good life. Good life, good life. No, they don't do it based on business. They just do it on paste the postal code. Hold on a second. I'm just going to get the postal code. Square one. 
Do uh, 33 Pearl Street, so that I'll put, pull up the uh, street swap. I'm picking it up. Hold on. Saga. Okay, let me close it to get rid of this. Do a radius. They have a pin mode, so you can actually just go with your pin and then just pick where you want, like that. Right. Um, oh, wait, you do have Google My Business. Let's just do that. Okay, so Google My Business is linked to 33 Pearl, and we're saying do a 20 mile radius, kilometer radius around it. That's actually not what I want. I wanted to show you the, the cool option of the pin. Let me do that again. Um, what's your postal code here? LM5. What? This is not working. Oh. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know what's what's going on here with this. And, uh, I honestly have no idea what they're doing here. Why it's maybe it's something Google. Then the whole address. Yeah, I put the whole address. <clears throat> Still not working. Hold on. Um, yeah, it's picking up Mississauga. <clears throat> Cooksville, Streetsville. <clears throat> Saying 86,000 a reach in Streetsville. Um, oh, yeah. So here you can also exclude oh, things. Yeah. I think it was because it was Canada and in turn another location. So it was. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so here you can also add areas that you don't want to search. So we, if you don't want to be in Mississauga, because again, it's just going to maybe eat up for whatever reason your budget. What is it doing here? Oh my goodness. Okay, it's not doing what it's supposed to. Okay, we'll just leave it at streets before now and I'll go back to it. Uh, okay, so in the additional options, you can target or exclude people in here as well. Okay, like very specific people in or regularly in your targeted locations. But I would just say just skip all this. Just put in the postal code or an area and just be happy. Uh, languages, if you speak another language, which many of the realtors do, uh, definitely add this in here, right? Because if somebody Googles in French and you speak French, then that's that's a win. Uh, but you can also target French ads. So you probably want to create two different ads, one in English, one in French for the exact same keywords. And then you can pick which one's performing better. So we just put English. Okay. Okay. Now let's select the Now audiences. So this is new. Employment. Okay. Actually, no, you would put real estate in here. So these are predefined things that Google has already for in market audiences. So these are what people are already looking for. So they created these polls based on the algorithm searches that already they already know who to target based on their phrases. So uh, we can just select residential properties, for example. And they're saying there is 1.1 billion to 5 billion impressions. Uh, by the way, impression is not like an ad. An impression is every flash of the screen. So if an ad showed up right now and I visited the website and that ad lasted for 30 seconds, that is one impression. Every time it refreshes itself, that's another impression. So you can purchase uh, ads by impressions on different websites too, especially on Facebook, right? So that's how that's what impressions are. Uh, audience targeting. Um, okay, again, there's so many options in here. I, I know just, I'm just gonna be confusing everybody. So we're just gonna do the basic. Uh, I'm just going to put in market real estate. Okay, budget. How much do you want to spend? We'll put $15 a day. Conversions. You could set an action, but we're not doing any actions on the website. So we're just going to leave this as is. We're going to leave conversions. 
And again, this is more settings. Okay, now these are your site link callout and call extensions. So I, one thing I don't understand why they, they present this to us before the ad. So I'm just gonna click this because it's better to see the ad before you, you do this. Okay, so this is now your keywords. Why is it showing Chinese characters? <laughs> yeah, I must have done something bad on this. Okay, let me just restart this whole thing. Do it quick, don't worry. New campaign, sale, search, website. Yeah, you're good with CA. Yeah. 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 Okay, there we go. Yeah, I must have done something doing all that. All right, so uh, so again, so now what do you feel that you want to be targeting in streets though, right? This is based on uh, what people are searching for right now. So we'll just leave it at, at this or we can create a new group. I'll leave it at that. Then the next one is your actual ad. So this is really where I wanted to get into. So this on the right side is showing you what it's going to look like. And on this side, this is where you're putting in the information. So let's see here, award winning. All right, so we're going to be using uh, this person here. I'm going to just replicate the whole thing. So first we've got the title, the headline. So you can see that it's not going to work because they're limiting me, right? 52 out of 30. So they want you to split this up a little bit. Like that, All right? Okay, next he's got sell your home with a highly shoe leg. So now we're gonna go to description, that fits. And then we've got the next description. There we go. So that's what he's got. Now he's got those three Callouts here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add that in. And so display path right here. This is if we wanted to uh, Victoria add it to a, an IDX feed, for example, and then we would enter it in here. Uh, and I will show you how to do that might as well. So if we're on Sabia's website and we go to, let's just say again, Oakville, we'll put one a million, one million, two million, two bedroom search, Not matching area is required. What does that even mean? I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. So B, are you here? Okay. Uh, okay, it's okay. We'll just do a search result then. Okay, let's just assume that this is our IDX feed link. You take this entire URL and you'd need to copy it in here somehow, right? They give you two uh, dashes. So let's see how many we need in here. We only need two. So yeah, so you've got this one, at least from her website, you paste that in here, and then you take your actual result. Hopefully that will work, because I see there's another one. So in this instance, it may be better just to buy a vanity, uh, vanity domain name and just put that in instead of Sabia Ali, maybe Sabia Ali homes for sale.com instead of having it this long, long path. But we'll leave it. Yeah, I see it's even too long. Even Google won't allow it. So yeah, in this instance, you'd need to get a short link. Uh, you can get a bit link. So bit.ly, which is a shortener. You paste your link in here and you get a very short link. And then you can take this and then Instead of using Sabi Ali, you need to change the domain name uh, to redirect to that link instead. So we'd have to go restart the ad, which we're not gonna do right now. 
uh, description. So we're just going to leave it Sabia Ali and then Okay, tracking. If you wanted to track because you linked your Google Analytics, which is another separate uh, workshop, you would add it in here. So that way you'd be able to track through analytics exactly how many people, what devices they came from, at what time, just extra level of, uh, of analytics. Done and create your next ad. Come on. Okay, we're done for that one. Okay, so now it showed us. Come on. It showed us what it's going to look like right in here. And we can always go back in here and edit it. And then here's what it would look like. Extensions here. Okay. One ad has issues that will prevent you from showing on Google. Fix it. Oh, that was the second one that I added. Okay. We're going to delete this one. I think Google's just being extra weird right now. It's not accepting anything. Uh, save and continue. Marcin, you were making us all look really bad. That says Google's payback. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, we can cut this part out. I pretty much went through the whole process, right? Um, I'm gonna have to do it again. It's just like every time I do it, it screws it up. Here's a completely finished ad. How about that? I created this before, right before I came on. So, uh, so this is for the office, right? And so this is what it's gonna look like when it's live. Right now it says it's active, but I submitted it an hour before. So the results are gonna start seeing in a few days. Uh, the ad is going Marcin, to just a quick, quick thing, uh, Marcin, maybe we can just do like a Google ad, like process it properly and we'll share it with everybody. So everybody yeah, I'll do it on the, I'll do it on the side. Exactly. Yeah. It'll be like yeah. a very we'll quick two minute thing link with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just do a, another one when everything is working. Cause I think there's something happening with the account. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think I'll, I think I'll take questions at this point, but, uh, as a takeaway, uh, granted these technical issues will, will happen. But uh, it really all comes down to market research and figuring out what other people are doing. So use those keyword widgets that I recommended. Do your uh, research with the keyword planner tool right here, right? Spend some time figuring out the interface, you know, you know copy the, uh, the phrases that you believe you'd like to target for and then figure out how much you're comfortable spending. Uh, just know average spend should be about a thousand bucks. You don't have to, you can spend hundred dollars a month, right? But then, you know, you may not get any results. And we'll prepare a very concise video, which is just step-by-step -step of how to create a, a Google ad and share it with everybody, right? Marcin? Well, I already created it. It's, it's right in here. Like this, okay. I went through this entire process yeah. right here. That's exactly what, yeah. Yeah. So maybe we'll just share this because this yeah. includes everything. Yeah. And so your account is in expert mode. That's the problem, right? I did this uh, in smart mode, which is what everybody else is going to have. Yeah. Susan has asked a question, uh, which Susan, if, I think it needs to be a search base, but I'm going to let Marcin answer it. He, she says, uh, do we get access to this Google AdWords for Realtor PowerPoint? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I don't know how we'll share it, but uh, I'll make it available. The PowerPoint? As a PDF, I can make it available as a PDF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll get it. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions, guys? Anybody? I think everybody totally gets it. <laughs> <laughs> or not? Totally gets it. No, actually, you know what is amazing about these things is like I, I remember. I, Back in the day, at, at one point, I had a couple of landing pages for condominiums. Um, so even just to understand that it, it it is just a landing page for that, it can be for a specific project, for a short term, long term. 
um you know just just to even know these things are out there is quite amazing amarson you know whether you do it yourself or you get someone else to do it for you yeah. um you know the possibilities are are amazing and it all leads from you actually creating a, a google business page and just to go back to what we did previously like you get google business page you get reviews those reviews are active you can uh, copy paste them on your as testimonials on your website on your facebook on your linkedin all of those things right so it's it's really of value just to even have those uh, reviews even instagram like it's super cool to cut paste edit them and put put them as uh, little graphics on your instagram um so even that that aspect of it helps and then if you ever want to actually create google ads and get a little bit more comp uh, you know um spend some money on it then then you can research this aspect of it yeah for whoever's left over i would love to hear what you're currently doing to uh, to get leads maybe it will help other people who are on the call right now like, does anybody want to share, you know, what your uh, strategies are right now? Like whether it's social media or anything, or are you giving away some secrets? Maybe I mean, you can turn your mics on and, and go, go ahead if, if anybody has anything to come up with. Well, I, I don't have much my, myself. That was actually a question I wanted to get, get forward with. Right now, I'm experimenting a lot with social media and the, like this Google ads and everything is something that I'm really uh again looking forward to and i'm just trying to absorb as much knowledge as i can um but yeah like that that's a question that i wanted to ask later on as well so if, if anyone does have any strategies i would, I would love to hear mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean and how can like you're for instance uh, a brand new realtor right so you can yeah. find like a niche market like you know first time home buyers like if if you really learn uh, the whole program that the government is offering uh, very, very well have actually a mortgage broker on your side that you can make a relationship with, figure out all the aspects of it and just roll that out as your campaign, yeah, right? That if, if that may suit your, your clientele. And that's so, if, that's why it's so important to actually understand what your target audience is going to be, because it helps you uh, with things like this, right? It's, it's more, it, then you, you're basically working with the pinpoint rather than like what Marcin said, going, going ahead and wasting all your money on things that are really not going to um, bring back any action for you. Exactly. If it's specific, the more specific uh, your, your uh, um, uh, a campaign is, the better it works for you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Definitely. Uh, I, I, I really do like that, uh, uh, that new uh, home buyer idea. And I definitely want to get it more into that and definitely look into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, you know, take take the, the top organic searches. If if we recall what we're talking about last a uh, couple of days ago in a previous, yeah. you know, take take a look at what is what are people getting when they put first time buyer in terms exactly. of ads, reverse engineer those ads, right? Paste them in here or here, paste in the website and see. Oh, that's the wrong the website. New Life Mortgages, for example. And and then just you know reverse engineer it. Right? That's all it is to it. And then you know, figure out where you fit in with your budget. And then look at the organic searches because the organic is really what's better than the ads. Ads will yeah. expire, but when you can cater your content and again this is what i've told david like 10 years ago like 12 years ago when i when i met him and he was telling me how do i do this there's no magic to it you i guarantee you you will become on the top of search engines for any phrase where you write 10 articles or more okay, you write 10 very well written articles that are beneficial to the reader like in this case a first time buyer, you mentioned whatever programs are, it's not about you. It's about the information you give them for free. If you have 10 of 10 very similar yet different articles with very uh, well researched search engines that you will get from here, like you will see what people are uh, bidding on. And these are the keywords that you're going to infuse into your articles, right? So if you're talking about first time home buyer, that could be your title. You can, and then you can see that people are searching for second mortgage. So you can almost write an article about, you know, top 
five ways to get a first time mortgage or get a second mortgage loan, right? You get that specific in the article and then you write 10 of those articles over a span of one a week, guaranteed you're going to be ranked without paying on, on the, one of those articles will be ranked. It, it just will. And the key guys is networking, right? The more you speak to partners uh, in the field, the more information and ideas you get, right? That helps you actually put in content that is relevant today that people are interested in. The more you read about real estate, the more you speak to other people, that's that's where you will get your content. Yeah, that's no. amazing. It's just about that consistency, staying consistent with it. Well, consistency, yeah. Consistency is really more for organic content, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, consistency is more so for video content on Google, but yeah. when it comes to writing articles, if you can write really well researched articles that are hitting the right keywords, you're going to be way ahead of someone. So I, I understand as realtors, you don't understand that. And honestly, I don't know if it's worth it to you. So if you can afford to spend, you know, it costs maybe two fifty, $250 to write a ghost article, right? You, you write points and then there's writers out there who specialize in this. You can give them two websites to read over and then write, original content for you and you own that outright right that's all and then you just go do your research you provide them with the articles and they will grammatically infuse those sorry you provide them with these keywords and they will infuse those keywords within their article about the things you want them to write i mean unless you want to write it right it's also it's all at the end of the day it's all strategy right you're either going to spend money on advertising or you're going to spend time on content development so over time you're going to be seen as an authority in that area and you won't even have to buy ads anymore. But for that, it is consistency with social media posts, video marketing, and that all costs money and time. So you already got to pick your battles, but you, like, it's almost impossible to do both because they both cost money. Right. If it was me, I would do content because content has worked very well for me, but it, it is a long game. And you have to be very skilled or you have to have deep pockets to pay for someone to do it for you. So I understand starting out, you may not want to do that. But if you're comfortable on camera, just start a YouTube channel. 100%. Google owns YouTube. I've been of. Yeah, Google That's owns YouTube. So, so if you put in for first time home buyer tips in Toronto, you know, if nobody's got a video about it and you've got two videos with that as a heading, you immediately. I also did, did a, a um, a session with with uh, Dan uh, for how to make videos and really quick, super quick ones. So yeah. we'll put it on our YouTube channel as well, um, Marcin, and then give access to everybody on that too. Yeah, so I've started, I've added a couple more um, yesterday That's in our training Dan section. Was. So we've got, they're, they're slowly getting added. So right now the website is joinsummit.ca and you guys can click just training. Uh, and this is where all the the courses are ending up right now, uh, but this will merge over to Sutton Summit very shortly, just mm -hmm. so you guys know. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if uh, so you have the up to it with David, but you know, if you have something to say or to share, then they can interview you guys for Zoom and this immediately gives you clout and it gives you backlinks because your name is included. Mm -hmm. So if people were to look for Bruce eventually over time, they'll come across this link and they'll be like, wow, he really is a top realtor, <laughs> right? Yeah. Without yeah. them knowing yeah. him personally. Yeah. So. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank Thanks, you everybody. Um, you are always like such a flood of information. It's amazing to just hear you. I can I can go ahead and listen to you all day long. What? Well, thank um, you. <laughs> no, you're a huge resource. It's a fact. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's let's work on this. Put out the right. put out the presentation for everybody to use, and hopefully. Um, some of us can benefit from it at least. Yeah, and last thing I'm gonna uh, reiterate, please uh, leave, re leave the reviews on Sutton Summit if you haven't already, and we will review leave the reviews for you as well. Just okay. make sure you put the link to your Google business within the comments on the Facebook. Otherwise, we're not gonna know, right? Oh, one time, uh, one last thing before we go, are, you, are we gonna be doing like a, like a YouTube seminar as well soon? And like, and the best way- Sorry, how can I kind of hear you? He's asking if we're going to be doing a YouTube uh, seminar. YouTube seminar. Well, yeah. that, like in what capacity though? Like, what do you mean? Uh, 
I don't I just like just like how these were with Google Ads and like uh, explaining everything and just doing doing like a whole breakdown of everything and just because like it is something like again that's new to me. You, Google channel a YouTube channel you just form it's and you as you're putting videos easy, you just right? upload them. Yeah, yeah. There. but there's yeah. a way there's a way to advertise your YouTube videos. You know when when you go on YouTube and somebody types in first home buyer and then you get an ad playing before yeah, it exactly. that also falls into Google AdWords. So when you're creating okay. a yeah when you're creating a campaign. Um, that is one of those options that you get to pick when you're choosing where with the ads are going to show. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it works the same way as a regular ad. So okay. you've got your search ads, you've got your right here, you get your brand aware. It suggests to you. So if you look down at the bottom, it says campaign types video. You see that? Yeah. This is all recommendation right here, display and video. So okay. if you click on this, you can say video. And then this will tell you where do you want the video to show? Bumpers, non skippable outreach, ad sequence. So then it's gonna force you to upload a video or link to a video that you have on YouTube and it will play that video whenever somebody types the search phrases within YouTube. All right, that's amazing. So it's a very similar process. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, but you really wanna, yeah. So I mean, if you wanna be Ty Lopez, that's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. So thanks everybody again. Uh, and I guess we'll see you next time.